Just finished watching the Supreme Court. It was a beautiful thing to watch in many respects. It's unfortunate that we have to go through a thing like that. I, I consider it to be more election interference by the Democrats. That's what they're doing. Uh, the good news is we're leading virtually every poll. We're leading uh, the — I don't even know if we have any more. I'm not sure that we even have a Republican candidate, somebody running, but not making any impact. So as you know, we won Iowa. We won New Hampshire in records, and each one a record. Uh, we think we're going to do very well. I'm heading out right now to Nevada for the caucus and uh, the caucuses. And uh, I think we're going to do very well there. All the polls indicate we're in the 90s, maybe more than the 90s. Uh, we certainly did well in a primary that didn't matter, where they voted very nicely. And we have tremendous support from the people of our country. Uh, they hate what's happening at the border. They hate what's happening. Just generally, we're not a respected country anymore. We're laughed at all over the world. They're laughing at us. And they hate what's happening. They hate seeing it. They love our country. They want it to come back. And we're going to do that. If you think about it, had the results of the election been different, that would be nice. Uh, you wouldn't have the Ukrainian situation with Russia. You wouldn't have had, you would not have had an attack on Israel which was so horrible. You uh, would not have had inflation. You wouldn't have China talking about Taiwan. You wouldn't have any of the problems that we have today. And you certainly had a, a broke Iran, and now you have a very rich Iran. Iran was broke when I left. But they had no money to give to Hamas. They had no money to give to Hezbollah. And now they, have worked, now they have 200 billion. Plus, as you probably know, people don't like to admit it, they certainly control Iraq. And Iraq has another 300 billion, so you have a very, a very rich group of, comp of countries. And uh, as you know, Iraq should have never happened. That was a balance against Iran, and we blew out the balance, and now Iran has essentially Iraq. And Iraq doesn't like saying that, but that's the way it is, and uh, it's a shame. The world is in tremendous danger. We're in danger of possibly a World War III, and we have a man who's absolutely the worst president in the history of our country can't put two sentences together. He's not going to be able to negotiate with Putin or Xi or Kim Jong-un, North Korea. Not going to be able to negotiate with anybody. All he knows how to do is drop bombs all over the place, meaningless bombs, except they kill a lot of people. It costs a lot of money. Every time you see a bomb, it's another million dollars. And it actually sets us back. We have peace through strength. This should not be happening. The Middle East is blowing up. It's blowing up. And a lot of people are being killed, and it's so unnecessary. So I just say that uh, in watching the Supreme Court today, I thought it was very — it's a very beautiful process. I hope that democracy in this country will continue, uh, because right now we have a very, very tough situation with all of the radical left ideas, with the weaponization of uh, politics. They weaponized it like it's never been weaponized before. It's totally illegal, but they do it anyway. And it has to stop. Every one of the court cases that I'm involved, every single one, civil, whether it's the attorney generals or the district attorneys, you look at Fani in Georgia. They had many meetings with the White House and with the DOJ. They went there, eight-hour meetings. That was all staged. That was a phony hoax. And now you look at it, and it is a phony hoax. And Hopefully, that case will be dismissed in short order. It's a, it's a disgrace to this country. But they work together with the Justice Department and the White House, and I'm not supposed to do that. Every one of these cases you see comes out of the White House. It comes out of Biden. It's election interference, and it's really very sad. Uh, I thought the presentation today was a very good one. I think it was well received. I hope it was well received. You have millions of people that are out there wanting to vote and they happen to want to vote for me or the Republican Party or whatever you want to, however you want to phrase it. But I'm the one running, and we are leading in every poll. We're leading in the uh, local polls, in the state polls, and we're leading in the swing state polls, and we're leading very big in the national polls. So it's been a very great honor. We love the country. Uh, I think the reason we have such big leads, frankly, is that they loved four years of us compared to the three years plus the three years that they've gone with Biden.
where you have open borders, you have crime. Nobody's ever seen crime like this, what's happening. And now the crime is being committed, much of it by the migrants that have come in illegally to our country. Uh, I was wondering about that. I said, you know, a lot of these people come out of jails, they come out of mental institutions, they come out of places that you don't want to know about. We don't even know where they come from. We don't know who they are, where they are. They're being dumped in from mental institutions, from prisons and jails. And many terrorists are coming into our country. We're going to be paying a big price. They have to stop it. They have to close the border. By the way, the president can do it just by saying, I want the border closed. I closed the border. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Now we have the most unsafe border in the history of the world. There's never been a, a country with a border like this, not even a third world country. So uh, we are, again, we're going out to Nevada right now. We'll be out there. Some of you are going to be out there with us. Otherwise, your colleagues will be. And hopefully we're going to have a big night caucus tonight. We're going to have a very big night. We expect to have a very big night. Uh, the Virgin Islands, as you know, are also very much in play today. So we'll be hearing about them sometime during the day or later on in the evening. And it's an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago. I hope you like it. Uh, it's worth a little more than $18 million. There's another case. He just says it's worth $18 million. I said, uh, which, uh, which cabin are we talking about? <laughs> But that's the kind of that's the kind of justice we have when they say that to try and build up a case. That was a shame. But that gave up so much. When they said that, that gave up so much that Mar Lago is worth eighteen million dollars. They had it appraised for, as you know, fifty to a hundred times that amount. But we have a judge that that's what he said. And he's supposed to be ruling on me. But who knows, maybe he'll be fair. I doubt it, but maybe he'll be fair. So I want to thank everybody. And by the way, we proved that case hundred percent five times over. That case is 100% proven, five times over. We've never seen anything like it. He just wouldn't dismiss it, no matter what. Shouldn't be there. It should have been in the commercial division. Anyway, uh, it's an honor to have you. I look forward to having you again, and I'll probably see you out in Nevada. Thank you very much. The U.S. Supreme Court is said to be broadly skeptical in early reporting about the effort to try and kick you off the ballot. Having said that, though, speak to the argument, legal and otherwise, that your detractors have made leading up to the day. And it's an argument that was given voice by Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, not long ago. All right, I got it. I got the gist. No question. Yeah, I got the gist. President Trump is practically yes. and morally responsible for okay. provoking the events of the day. He doesn't say that anymore. So let me just tell you that I heard and I watched. And the one thing I'll say is they kept saying about what I said right after the insurrection. Because I think it was an insurrection caused by Nancy Pelosi. This was an insurrection, if it was an insurrection, which there were no guns, there were no anything except for the fact that they shot Ashley Babbitt. Somebody from the police force shot Ashley Babbitt. So unnecessary, so sad, so horrible. But there were no guns, there were no anything. But if you take a look at my words, right after, you take a look at my speech from the Rose Garden, which was very shortly after. Or you take a look at my, I'm only on Truth now, but at that time we were tweeting and I was on Twitter. If you take a look at those five or six tweets, you will see very beautiful, very heartwarming statements. Go home, the police are doing their job, etc., etc. Beautiful statements. If you see my statement made in the Rose Garden, I think you have to watch that, because today they said the words of Trump. Now, if you take a look at the words of Democrats over the last period of time, look at Schumer's statement about the Supreme Court on the steps of the Supreme Court. He sounded like a mob boss. Take a look at uh, any of them. Take a look at any. We, we put together a tape of vicious, violent statements made by Democrats. Nobody brings that up. Take a look at Maxine Waters and the vicious statements that she made. I didn't do that. I said peacefully and patriotically. The speech was called Peacefully and Patriotically. It's pe peacefully and patriotically. He said I said bad statement. It was the exact opposite. So I think you should take a look at the statements that I made uh, before and after, and you'll see a whole, a whole different uh, dialogue. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, you just mentioned Chinese President Xi. Uh, you said that you were going to impose 60% tariffs to get back in office. Can you explain your rationale there? We want to bring business back to the U.S. They're stealing our business. They're taking our business at levels that 
nobody's ever seen before. By doing that, we bring business back, manufacturing back to the United States, which I was doing. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No president had ever taken in 10 cents, not 10 cents. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars and jobs were coming back. I was saving steel companies. Now they are blowing it. When I see U.S. steel being bought by Japan, what a sad thing that is to me. What a sad thing that is. So we want to bring jobs back. Very simple. Thank you. President, do you still have confidence in Speaker Johnson after the failed minority coup in 2013? I do have confidence in him, yeah. I very much do. I think he's very, he's a very good man, and I have great confidence in him. Why is Leo Khan, Nikki Haley, still in the race when you're dominating in the polls? Oh, I love that question. Thank you very much. You just said it. Uh, I don't know why she continues, but let her continue. Uh, we have a big one coming up, as you know, in South Carolina. And the polls are indicating that we're, we're through the roof on that one. We're, we're leading by, I guess, 35 percent, 35 points. Uh, so I don't know. I think she hurts herself, but I think she hurts the party and in a way hurts the country. But it seems to be dying. She did poorly in Iowa. She did very poorly in uh, Iowa, actually. She came in third place. Ron DeSantis beat her, although you wouldn't know that if you listened to her speech. Uh, she did poorly in uh, New Hampshire. She did poorly no matter where she went. I, I don't know how the results aren't in yet from the Virgin Islands, but I know she's playing it very hard. And in Nevada, she, she lost to no name. She had a no name, and she lost by, I guess, 40 points. So uh, I don't know why she continues, but she's a... Uh, you know, I, I don't really care if she continues. It's, uh, it's. Uh, I think it's bad for the party. I think it's actually bad for her too. Mr. President, thank you for having us on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, given the battle of Well, I can say presidential immunity, which we'll be talking about because that will be upcoming, is very, very important for a president to have. If a president doesn't have immunity, he really doesn't have a presidency. Uh, he can be uh, he can be told to do things that he would never do. He can do really bad things for our country. Presidential immunity is imperative. It's going to be very, very important. And I'd rather talk about that next week. But there is nothing more important to a presidency than immunity because they have to be free to make decisions without saying, oh, if I do this or if I do that, as soon as I get out of office, we're going to be indicted, we're going to have trouble. And the other party will do that. I think we've seen that. They've done that. There's some very bad people. And you have an opposition party, and they will do things that are very bad. If you don't have immunity, you can be blackmailed. You can be, as a president, they'll say, if you don't do this, this, or this, we're going to indict you as soon as you leave office. You cannot allow a president to be out there without immunity. If they don't have immunity, you don't have a presidency. Sir, you, you lose all, excuse me, you lose all, you lose all form of, of free thought and good thought. And you probably weaken the presidency to a point that it was never supposed to be weakened. It would be a very bad thing for our country. We'll be talking about immunity in the coming weeks. Mr. President, how confident are you that you will be treated fairly by the Supreme Court justices? And how do you think you can well, I'm a believer in our country, and I'm a believer in the Supreme Court. Uh, I listened today, and I thought our arguments were very, very strong. Uh, an argument that uh, is very important is the fact that you're leading in every race, you're leading in every state, you're leading in the country against both Republican and Democrat. And Biden, you're leading in the country by a lot. And can you take the person that's leading everywhere and say, hey, we're not going to let you run? You know, I think that's pretty tough to do, but uh, I'm leaving it up to the Supreme Court. Thank you all very much. Enjoy it. Thank you.